Hello and welcome to the Phil Pulse Podcast. This is episode number 329. My name is Adam Patterson. With me today, we got Kevin Eric Straw. Hey, Kevin. Hey. This week on the show, we'll be talking about this year's New York Asian Film Festival, which kicked off this weekend. So we'll be doing featured reviews on two of the movies that just premiered there, Jinpa and Hardcore. We'll also be talking about some of we're watching on the watch list and going over this week's new releases in theaters, VOD, and Blu-ray. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember to please consider reviewing us on iTunes if you get a chance. That would be awesome. A couple of housekeeping things. New episode of Saved by the 90s is dropping today. Oh. So the day that this episode goes live, we're also releasing the new episode of Saved by the 90s. Uh, it took me a little long to finish the edit. Ooh. And that's why it's a little bit late. It's my fault. But I think you guys are going to like it. We talk about uh, movies that came out in June throughout the 90s that were horrendous bombs. Yes. So we, so we talk yes. about um, The Cowboy Way starring Woody Harrelson and Kiefer Sutherland. We talk about Batman and Robin, the Joel Schumacher one from 97. We talk about speed to cruise control which that that was the first time watch for me so that was interesting and uh what was the other one um last action hero okay from 93 so check that out again that's going to be on a separate feed so just uh search your preferred podcast provider for saved by the 90s or you can go to filmpulse.net and it'll be on there as well I'm not sure if there's going to be a new episode of Ryan watches a movie this week. No, supposedly, uh, supposedly we were going to be recording today, but I don't, I have no idea what's going on. He has a movie and presumably he watched it. Okay. Is I there, guess. Is there world cup today? I don't know. US it, I think the U S plays on Tuesday. So I'm not sure if uh, there's going to be an episode of Ryan watches movie or not this week. We're going to try to make it happen, but it's tough getting Ryan to commit. <laughs> I don't know why, but all right. So the New York Asian film festival happening right now, we don't, I think that we'll probably discuss it more next week as well uh, because it just kicked off this week. So we, I don't have a whole lot to say about it just yet. Although the lineup looks really impressive again this year, as it does pretty much every year. I think this is like our third or fourth year covering this this festival uh it the opening film was samurai marathon i'll talk a little bit about that later on in the show but one of the films that premiered it had its u.s premiere on the uh 28th no i'm sorry saturday the 29th was jinpa this is uh directed by pema sedin i have a synopsis here on an isolated road passing through the vast barren plains of Tibet, a truck driver who has accidentally run over a sheep chances upon a young man who's hitching a ride. As they drive and chat, the truck driver notices that his new friend has a silver dagger strapped to his leg. He comes to understand that, that his man is out to kill someone. His man is out to kill someone who wronged him earlier in life. I think it's supposed to be this man as he drops the hitchhiker off at a fork in the road. Little does the truck driver realize that their short time together has changed everything and that their destinies are inextricably intertwined. Kevin, what do you think of Jinpa? Man, it's got some beautiful landscapes in there and it's just, it's, I, I, I must say that I enjoyed it's, it's kind of leisurely pace. And it's just use of empty space and silence, really. I mean, really, the main thing that you hear throughout this movie is wind. It's just him driving on that, that long, desolate road. And uh, it's just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful movie. It's got beautiful cinematography. Landscapes are incredible. It, it, it kind of lost me a little bit at the end. But kind of at that point, I didn't really care too much. It's one of those things where it's like it got me into the mood where I'm like, I don't care about like plot whatsoever or narrative. Just I'm just here. Yeah. 
Well, it's good because there isn't much plot no. or narrative <laughs> no, there's not. to speak of. I mean, essentially, the the synopsis is pretty much exactly what the movie is, and it sets itself up to be a lot more intriguing than what actually unfolds on screen. And in that regard, I thought it was a little bit of a bummer. Like, I was maybe expecting a little bit more mystery or suspense or something and it doesn't really deliver that but but you quickly sort of figure out that it's it's really not that kind of movie it is sort of this like somber very quiet movie where like you said a lot of it uh, the majority of it is just just this dude driving he's just driving down the road he's this, just, this he's sort from, of he's leathered up He's mm-hmm. got his he's got his leather fanny pack. His shades. He's got his shades. shades. He's got his cigarettes. And he's just he's just driving around. He's just doing his thing. Yeah, and in that regard, uh I think I enjoyed I enjoyed the the movie overall. I thought maybe it was a little bit lacking in the in the narrative department. But the visuals, as you said, are really stunning uh it's it's really really amazing cinematography in this the framing uh a lot of the shots are just really like exquisitely framed the one that sticks out in particular is when he goes to visit i guess it's his girlfriend or maybe it's his wife i don't even know but the way they framed that shot where it was just sort of focused on like their torsos and how he was like holding, trying to hold her hand and she was kind of pulling away. It just, it just sort of alluded to so much that was going on in their relationship that we'd never really found out about. But there was just, there, you could tell that there was so much going on underneath the surface in that shot. And I just thought that that was really great. Yeah, this is definitely someone that understands visual storytelling in terms of filmmaking. Where it's not a whole lot, not a whole lot hinges on the narrative. It's actually, you know, the actual imagery itself mm-hmm. is saying a lot. And I mean, just a couple of times that they break away just to, sh- to show like the sky, which yeah. is like, damn. And you're right. It, it does. It, there is that little bit of a promise of like some sort of intrigue or mystery that doesn't seem like it, it, it's capitalized on entirely so it is a little bit of a letdown in that regard i would agree with but like i said it, it, everything that's that's built up up until that point i was i kind of didn't really mind no it's interesting because i i found myself really sort of like at one point i kind of suspected like this isn't gonna end how i, I want it to end there's not gonna be like yeah any kind of big reveal or big resolution or anything like that and i was okay with it by that by by the time i had that realization i was like all right that's okay (laughs) you know like i was i was just like oh all right i mean i would prefer a little bit more explanation especially when they go to the when he goes back to the town and starts tracking down uh, like the the drifter, and then like the the man who he's looking for. It, I guess I was left wanting a little bit when it comes to the story behind that. Yeah, but in the end, I was just like, okay. I mean, it, it it's a movie that just kind of crept into my life and then just wandered off, and I was just, I was fine with that. Yeah, I also think that there's a good, very 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 good chance that we miss some stuff being white Americans. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, certainly this is, uh, this is a Tibetan film and there's probably a lot of cultural nuances that are happening there that we didn't pick up on. And, uh, this is going to sound like such a snobby nitpick, but we were provided a screener for this and it was, Oh yeah. <laughs> The quality of of it was so atrocious. And, and again, this is this. I, I'm not knocking the movie or the director or anything like that. But I feel like there were things that I missed because of how poor the quality was on this 
screener, the, the aspect ratio was wrong. The, some of the subtitles were cut off. Yeah. I, it wasn't, it was like a four by three aspect ratio. And I don't think it's supposed to be like that. And I can't remember if it's this movie or, or hardcore, but is this the one that had like three different watermarks on it? Yes. This had three <laughs> watermarks. And one of which was like, it said like viewing and it was like somebody else's name. Yeah. And I'm just like, so it's almost like, like, did they, did they, is this like a rip from someone else's computer? I think it's a DVD rip. Well, because uh, I'm sure that I'm going to mention this when we talk about hardcore too, because hardcore had issues as well. And I'm pretty sure that they ripped this from a DVD and just didn't do it properly. Yeah. And, but you at least know from what you do see, even though it is poor quality, like I, I gotta imagine seeing this on a big screen is quite something. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I don't, I don't feel like it detracted too much from the viewing experience for me. It was still good enough that I could take it all in and really appreciate it. Yeah. And I definitely, I'm definitely curious to see his other work. Yeah, it's just like the 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 skill, like the filmmaking skill there is just it's undeniable. Like it might be a little bit lacking in certain places in terms of like we talked about narrative and this and that. But like the actual filmmaking skill that's on display here is it's quite exceptional. Yeah. Uh, Performances across the board were really solid, too. Is is Jinpa... Is that the main guy or is that the drifter? The main guy. The main guy is Jimpa. He's really good. He plays this kind of stoic. He doesn't have a lot of lines, but uh, he speaks volumes in this movie. And I think he does a really fantastic job. I would agree. (laughs) What's your name? My name's Jimpa too. (laughs) How'd you get that name? A llama. (laughs) Yes, there's a, there's a decent amount of humor in it as well. Even though yeah. it is like a really like a slow moving film where not a whole lot happens, there is a decent amount of humor in there. Enough to enough to elicit some some chuckles and chortles. Certainly, yeah. Yeah, that's that's really all I have to say about Jinpa. It's it's worth a look. I would give it a light recommend. Yeah, I think it's definitely worth a look. And definitely, I like I. There's a there's a, a part of me that really wants to watch this again with like good quality. Yeah, and see what the experience is that way. Let's give this a score, Kevin. What are you going to give Jinpa? I'm going to give Jinpa uh, a seven. All right, I'm sitting around a six on this one. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Keep keep an eye out for it. I know that. With with Asian cinema, it's really hard to nail down any kind of proper U.S. release on these movies because they seem to either not come out at all or they'll just suddenly pop up on Netflix or something. Yeah. And they never really get any kind of true release. And I always think that's such a bummer. Uh, all right, let's move on, talk about hardcore. This is directed by Nobuhiro... Yamashita. Uh, I have a synopsis here. Hardcore is about the life story of a treasure hunter who lives in the countryside of Gunma in Japan. He is pure and kind, but has no communication skills and has a mind of his own. His sole friend is his coworker. This man has never had sex. The friends find a robot one day. The robot wants to stay with the men. A bond is formed. The men resolve to change their lives. All right. All right, then. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> wow. Yeah. We have a review for this up on the site now. Chris, Chris wrote a review for us. And uh, Hardcore, this was a little bit of a, a letdown for me. Reading the synopsis, and not the one that I just read, but the one that was on the New York Asian Film Festival website, which was... Much, uh, much better than what I just read. I was like, oh, this sounds really fun. You know, these yes. kind of 
yes. this group of this group of losers that finds this robot and then like all the stills that you see look so funny the robot looks so goofy and it just looks like it's just just a good time but it's, it's not <laughs> no i i did not have a good time with this movie i i <laughs> I legit I picked this based solely on the the fact that there's this robot involved and that they're losers and the fact that I saw a couple of stills where like you said it's a goofy ass robot. Now, the robot doesn't show up for a long time and I honestly started to question if this was if I thought maybe I picked the wrong <laughs> movie. The wrong one. And I was like, well these guys are losers, but there's no there's no robot. What is happening? See, the thing is, you go into a thinking that the robot is the centerpiece. It's not. No. The robot plays such a minor role. Even after the robot does show up, he's like a secondary character. <laughs> he's like, he only shows up every now and then. And you're like, why is this not the focal point of the movie? <laughs> this is like a hyper intelligent robot that can fly, detect gold, and do all this crazy stuff. But it's like relegated to some side character. It's like he's like the best friend character in a rom com or something. And it's so, like when it's introduced out of nowhere that he has rocket boosters in his feet and he can fly them off to safety. It's just like that happens and then it's not really ever discussed. Like no one's freaking out. Nope. No one's like, holy shit, what else can this thing do? They're just kind of like, oh yeah. And it's just odd that he like flies them back to the abandoned factor like he, he could go fly anywhere yeah it's just it you would think that this goofy ass robot would at least inject some semblance of fun into this movie but it almost gets worse when the robot shows up i will say that the there was like this one scene where they take him to a bar and i thought that was kind of fun the dance scene how they just the disguises that they give him I thought that was fun, but and, and just the just the look of the robot, I think, is yes. enjoyable. His with his eyeballs, his weird, creepy eyes. But, but so so much of it, it, it's just like the structure of it is very odd. Just the way that the, the scenes are pieced together, especially before the robot shows up, it's just like it's so completely random that I honest, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah, it, I have like an idea, but I'm just like, none of this is interesting. Like, I don't, what What are we doing? What is the point of this? Yeah, it's very, it's just very shoddy. Like the, the whole narrative structure is just all over the place. I mean, at its core, it's about these, these losers who are trying to find a, a Shogun's gold that's been lost for centuries, I guess. And but even that is such a small, yeah. small portion of what this movie is. It, it's you know, just, them it, looking for the gold. It feels like it's overloaded. It's just entirely too much going on. And they got it like they periodically drop in with like every little loose thread that's happening because you have the guy and his brother who's like a traitor. And there's for some reason just a scene of him having sex with a woman. Yeah. You know, it was for whatever reason. Yeah, I wanted to. That that's something that I wanted to mention is the overabundance of sex in this movie that feels so unearned and so unnecessary. Why? Why is it in this movie? It seems it it gives it this sort of exploitive feeling, and the the way that female characters are portrayed in this movie is borderline horrific i it, i just yeah, i can't get behind this movie especially towards the end because it's like completely derailed and detoured into this like now all of a sudden the main guy's trying to you know have this relationship with his whoever that fucking guy bosses his, yeah. his his boss's daughter and his boss's daughter for some reason it's like this just a hyper nymphomaniac, which I don't, it's so fucking dumb. This yeah. is fucking dumb. And it just gets dumber and dumber. And you're just like the fucking robot. Where's the robot? 
I want I want these buffoons to be going on adventures with their robot buddy. And instead we're just getting like really awkward sex scenes and scenes like the 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 guy who I guess he was supposed to be this like really smart student and he had some kind of nervous breakdown and he ran away and he lived in an abandoned factory for 10 years. Yeah. And that's that's the one like the main character and like they call him a mute, but he sometimes talks and I yes. feel like even that character is somehow offensive in his portrayal. Yes. Yeah. And it's just, I don't understand how you have all of these elements that we're talking about. The centerpiece being that there's a fucking robot that looks goofy as shit. And this movie is not fun in any way whatsoever. Like, why is it so serious? Why is this movie so fucking serious? It annoys me. I don't know. And then the ending, um, I'm I'm not going to spoil it, but it's not a good ending either. It's utterly ridiculous. I don't understand why things happen the way they do. Like, there's a murder involved and... I'm just like, what? what? Where are they going with this movie? What? What? Why am I watching this? What is this all about? It just meanders from like weird plot thread to plot thread. None yeah. of it. None of it coalesces into anything. And there's occasionally a robot, that yeah. is, which is the craziest part. It is like this is like the most advanced technology in the world. And like nothing, there's nothing done with it outside of like they used it to find some gold. And that was it, really. They flew, yeah, they flew with him twice and they used him to find gold. They yeah, dig for gold. Yeah, that's it. Like they, these fucking guys, they don't deserve that robot. Could have had so many better adventures if it wasn't for these two dipshits. I love it. The main guy is like having breakfast or whatever. And that news thing pops up on a TV where they're like, oh, two Japanese guys were killed out in the... And it's like, just, oh, that's my brother. That's it's like, exactly dude. what I was just going to bring up. I was going to bring up that exact thing. I was like, is that... Was that his brother that was involved in that? But I love it, that... It's, it's, it's honestly... The only information that he gets is two Japanese guys killed by gangsters on a boat, like headed to Hong Kong or something. And he's just like, well, that's definitely my brother. Doesn't figure out any other information. Doesn't ask around. He calls his brother once on that cell phone, the the satellite phone. He doesn't answer. And he's just like, well, he's dead. That sucks. My brother's dead. And it's just like, what? I'm pretty sure you would get confirmation from somebody. The police would call you. Yeah. <laughs> it was so weird. <laughs> like, well, I don't know. Why did that exist? I just, I don't know. Uh, that's, uh, that's hardcore. What a disappointment that one was. It's just fucking poor robot. Really, really w- wasted opportunity with that one. Could have been a... Wasted in so many different ways, too. They just, they literally just keep coming up with new, new narrative strands to, to get away from the robot. Uh, all right. So that's, that's hardcore. Uh, if you're, if you're going to the festival, I would, I would, uh, skip that one. I I don't know how, I think maybe a lot of these only have like one screening. I think that that one only had one screening. It had its North American premiere Saturday night. Okay. Uh, what are you going to give hardcore out of 10? It's odd because this is one of those movies where, like, as I was watching it and afterwards, you know, I'm like, God, this is, why the fuck did I watch this? But now talking about it, like, this movie pisses me off. Like, I'm really angry about it now. So originally I was, like, at a four, but I think I'm going to be, like, a like a, like a two. Mm. Yeah, I'm sitting at around a three on this one. Don't, don't waste your time with this one. Big, big letdown. Uh, Chris gave it a five. He wasn't really big on it either. Generous. Yeah. Yeah. Generous. Yeah. I mean, if you read his review, 
Uh, five is generous. So there are a huge number of movies playing at New York Asian Film Festival this year. I'm not sure what the count is. It's it's well over 100, I believe. The uh, opening night film was Samurai Marathon. And this is directed by Bernard Rose. If that name sounds familiar, he's the guy who directed Candyman. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> of course. Really? Yeah, uh, the the director of Candyman coming out with a samurai movie. It's based on a true story. I have a review for this up on the site right now. In 1855, there was a samurai clan who, upon the arrival of U.S. imperialists, uh, the the lord of the clan got very nervous about a possible invasion from the Americans. So they. So at this point, they hadn't been at war for 260 years. So they, they had been living in peace for, you know, two, over two centuries. And he was worried that his warriors were getting soft. So he sets up a marathon for everyone in the village uh, to run who's, who's under the age of like, I think it was 50 or 55, to run this marathon. It was like 35 miles. And a ninja spy within the clan thought that he was preparing a coup against the Shogun. So he sent out a message to the Shogun saying like, you know, they're, they're planning for, to attack. This was before he realized, oh no, it's just a training exercise. They're just running. And unfortunately he couldn't like, by the time he figured it out, the message was already sent. So the Shogun ends up sending a group of assassins to kill everyone in the, in the village to kill the whole clan. All because of a marathon. Yeah. And they were, see the, the, the men, the killers that they sent were going to wait until after they finished running the marathon. So when they got back to Smart. the village, Smart. when they were like all exhausted and stuff and then ambushed them. Smart. But, Fortunately, uh, the members of the, of the clan figured it out, saw that they were coming. And then the ninja spy who sent the message ended up betraying the, the Shogun and siding with the samurai clan and helped protect them. Oh man. It's pretty good. It's got a really weird tone to it. There's like this, there's comedy in it, like a fair amount of comedy, which sometimes feels very awkward because it's this kind of like dramatic period piece with these samurai who are like being killed and having to, to fight off the Shogun's warriors. And so, so at, at times it's very serious, but then at other times it's like, there's a scene where a bear shits on somebody's face <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's like <laughs> kind of goofy at times too. Like, like, because they are sort of out of shape, like they're just struggling to, to run this marathon. They're just, some of them are like vomiting and they, they just can't do it. Um, but so yeah, it's a, it's a little tonally awkward, but Overall, it's very, it's a uh, very fun, very entertaining. The action scenes are, there's not a lot of them, uh, because I, I wouldn't call this like an action movie per se, but when the fighting does occur, it's very bloody and it's all practical effects, uh, for the most Ooh, part, like no okay. weird CG blood or anything like that. It's all really, re really well done early on when the, uh, like warriors, the shoguns, uh, assassins are coming to when they're making their way to the village they pass somebody and they end up cutting this dude's head off and the way that it's shot uh with like the blood sort of splattering across these uh this, this like wheat field looks really cool and there were several other scenes that were that were really well done but overall i would give it a light recommend samurai marathon Samurai Marathon. Yeah, when we were look, when you gave me that list of options for this weekend, reading that one first, I was just like, "That's the last thing I want to see samurais do." 
No, running thank a marathon? You. Yeah, it's just like samurai running a marathon. No, thank you. Why would I think that? Interestingly, it's a tr- it became a tradition. So they still run the marathon every year in that in that uh, it's it's in a uh, place called Anaka. Hmm. You'd think that you would like marathons are like you really have to train for them. Yeah. Like, you, couldn't you just do some, like, sh- short sprints, some suicides? No, nah, man. Got to make sure they're ready. <laughs> ready for those imperialists bringing their guns. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, that, 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 that's the only other uh, New York Asian Film Festival movie I can talk about right now, but gotcha. we'll talk about more of them next week. Yeah, because there's a couple other ones on there that uh, look pretty damn good. Yeah. I'm excited to see the new uh, Sabu movie, Jam. Yes, I was very excited to see that on there. Because I another kind of one forgot of, about he, him. Another one of his movies, Mr. Long, is screening there also, which I saw a really long time ago at Tribeca. But if, if you haven't seen that yet and you're checking out the festival, I would recommend that okay. one as well. All right, all right. Uh, I saw Vice. Oh. That Dick Cheney movie. Yeah. Well, Adam McKay. Adam McKay. Oh, boy. Wolf. I mean, that guy's just a fucking mess of a director. I thought it was like, I found it to be more competent than The Big Short, but still just an absolute fucking mess. Like, I just, I hate that style. Like, I just can't, I can't take it. Just editing wise, it's just an absolute nightmare. Yeah, I just, it's I certainly just, not for everyone. I just I couldn't stand it. It's just and like so much of it is just extremely basic. Where you could it was just like the gleaned off of Wikipedia or something. Some of these scenes, like the uh when Dick Cheney's daughter comes out. It's just like you see, this is in a, a movie that was nominated for Oscars. For real? Hmm. It's just it was bad. I don't know if I'm gonna do his uh his uh I guess these these serious if you want to call them serious movies. I don't know I don't know what to categorize them as. I mean they're they're yeah. serious subject matter, but they're not dealt with seriously really at all. Yeah, they're they're kind of a in between. Yeah. I don't I don't like it. I don't like it. Go back to the other stuff. All right. That's Vice. Uh, I saw Midsummer, directed by Ari Aster. I'm not going to talk about this a lot because we're going to be reviewing it, doing a full review of it next yeah. week. Yeah. I'll just say I have a review up for this up on the site. It is uh, completely spoiler free and uh, pretty much loved it. Pretty much loved it. Can't wait to see it again, actually. It's a long one. It's It's almost two and a half hours long, but... D- did not feel that length. I did not feel the length at all. I think you might because you're, uh, you're more sensitive to that. And I, and I don't think you're going to be as enthralled with it as, as I was, but cause you uh, weren't, you weren't as big on uh hereditary as I was either. Yeah. The, the, this, the, the runtime thing has two things going for it, right? One, I haven't been to the, the theaters in ages. So I'm just kind of excited to go to the theater. Two, it's really fucking hot out. So sitting inside watching a movie in air conditioning, you can be as long as you want. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go of, back. I don't want to go back. Out of out that. Keep me out of that inferno. Because I, like, I don't know if it's age or something, but man, I, the heat, I just fucking will. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I, um, I, I walk a lot. and. Fuck it, that. Man, it is just there was one day last week where I took the train just because I was like, I can't I can't do it. Like I started walking and I got like a quarter of the way and I was just like, nah, can't do it. <laughs> like I'm just <laughs> And I don't know, again, I don't know if it's age or if it's climate change or what, but the sun just feels hotter. It just feels hotter than it used to. I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit of both. I don't know why, but it just if it, it's like you can feel it more. It's like it's closer to us. Like, are we inching closer to the sun? 
I think technically we are, but I don't know if it'd be enough for you to notice. <laughs> I, can, I can fucking feel it. It's palpable. I'm telling you. Midsummer, go see it. It's out soon. Uh, the third comes out, so it's a no-brainer. Go see it in the theater. <laughs> it's a no-brainer. Get out of the heat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what else did I watch? What else? Uh, 1985's Obi Oba, The End of Civilization from Peter Solskin. This is a this is a gritty, dirty sci-fi movie, which, uh, I mean, this guy... He is kind of incredible in what he's able to do world building wise with like the budget that he has. Uh, so this is all set in this like underground world, like this big elaborate system underground where the people are waiting for the, the quote unquote arc to come and save them from the nuclear holocaust. So they're kind of like trapped down in there and they're just waiting out for the arc to come. And obviously, there's a lot of people that don't think the Ark is coming. Some people do think the Ark is coming. And there's some people that their job is to get people to believe that the Ark is coming. So everything doesn't just, you know, fall apart on them. And they have, it, it, it has some similarities to other sci fi movies and stuff. Like the, the lowest masses are fed through this, like, shoot type deal where a guy up above is he puts in like books into this thing that like mashes them up and turns them into these like pulpy bars that they eat and uh it's just it's really quite something for what he's able to do the world building that he's able to pull off and just the the filmmaking has this kind of like uh this steady cam just like wandering around and stuff and following this, this the main character, it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty incredible. So if you ever get a chance to check it out, I uh, I say do so. And that's O B O B A, the end of civilization. Correct. I saw Child's Play. I have a review for this up on the site. It's all right. I didn't <laughs> hate it. I didn't. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. Now I'm a pretty big fan of the Child's Play series. I like all of them. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Seed of Chucky and Bride of Chucky. I think they're all right, but they're certainly pretty low on my, on my list. I think that this one, the, the reboot falls after Child's Play 3. So I think that this would be better than Bride and Seed and Curse and Cult. Although I will say that the newer ones curse and cult were surprisingly decent you know every everybody knows at this point the what they how they changed it so they made chucky instead of the soul of a serial killer inhabiting a doll it's like an ai thing that's it's it's like an alexa that's gone crazy essentially it was a disgruntled employee who turned off all of the like safety features oh, and man. turned turned Chucky bad and he he became sentient and it it works there's a lot of really fun things that they do with the technology things that they certainly wouldn't be able to do in the wow. 80s i mean the fact that the the doll itself is designed to control all of your smart home devices you know much much like an echo would like you could control the thermostat and other electronics in your home i i think that they do some really cool stuff with it It, it's pretty self-contained most of the movie takes place within uh, an apartment building much like the original and but it opens up pretty to, to a pretty crazy uh finale at the end which was really fun it sort of straddles the line between just straight up horror and comedy, you know, where the first three child's play movies played everything pretty straight. And then bride and seed just went up, went straight comedy with it. Mm -hmm. This, this one is sort of in the middle. There are some really tense horror moments, but there's some really kind of goofy moments too. It's, it's pretty self-aware. It knows exactly what it is. And 
I will say also that I appreciated the fact that the that Chucky was an animatronic robot in this that they didn't do wasn't CG. There was there was some CG in it, but for the most part, it was a real doll that they were you know controlling. So certainly appreciated that, and there were a lot of callbacks and homages to the, uh, the to the original one as well, like the first person view was in this as well and some other little winks and nods to to the original series mark hamill does a really good job as chucky i was concerned when they were replacing brad durf because i couldn't i couldn't really imagine anybody else being chucky yeah Um, but but then when they announced mark hamill i was like okay well if anybody's gonna do it i think he would he would do it and he does a really good job the the only problem is because This Chucky is a robot. It's an AI. He doesn't have a lot to work with because his personality isn't quite as pronounced as Brad Dourif's version. So Mm. a lot of what he does is sort of just repeats things that he's heard people say like in a a different context. So So they're kind of, I wonder if they're going to build it up that way, kind of like machine learning. It seems that way. Yes. Yeah, it seems that way because at the beginning he can just do sort of basic things, but he does learn. And that that's sort of what the movie is, is hinting at where he doesn't start out evil. He learns to be evil. He and learns from the, oh boy. He, yeah, he learns from his environment to oh, become evil. That's a comment on something. It is. It, it is. There's there's several comments made in this. Like the opening scene takes place in the 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 factory where the, they make the buddy dolls is in Vietnam and they're like you know working these their 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 people to uh, you know to to commit suicide essentially. So cer- certainly there are some. Uh, there's some social commentary happening here, but I would say it's all very, it's very surface level stuff. Wow. I would recommend checking out child's play. It's, it's worth a look light recommend. All right. Let's take a look at what we have in theaters this week. We got, got some biggies, got some biggies mm-hmm. coming out. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man far from home in theaters, July 2nd. What do you think about this? You, you liked homecoming the last one as did I. I did. I did. What are you thinking but, about this one? But the weird thing is, is I, I like, I oddly enough have like little to no interest in this. I don't know why. Like, I like the other one. I, I'm not over the moon for this one. And I also don't know why. Maybe it's just because I feel like Endgame was such a good end point that I feel like I just need a little bit more time away from the superhero movie. But in, in some ways I'm kind of hoping that this one just brings back a regular, you know, one-off story that doesn't turn into this like huge 10 year epic arc, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to go see it. I'm going to go see it. I, I really like the Spider-Man I liked the last one. I think this one will be fun. I like the idea of Jake Gyllenhaal being Mysterio. That's kind of. I did. I And I think I read somewhere too, where like his performance is kind of a little bit wacky, kind of like Okja, like a little bit subdued Okja, which I love when Gyllenhaal get, just yeah. like Gyllenhaal loose. Yeah. We, we talked about that before. I think during our uh, velvet buzzsaw. Yeah, you let him. You let him go, Bubble Boy. Sign me up. Uh, hopefully, that's what it's like. I don't know. We'll. I'll report back on that next week, probably. Please Mitchell, do. <laughs> I mean, I know you're not going to go see it, so. No, but I'll definitely. I'll be more inclined to see it if I find that out. Okay. All right. Uh, Midsummer is coming out on the third. Check that out. We'll be certainly reviewing that one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. VOD this week we got Dolls on July second. This is cashing in on the Child's Play reboot. Oh, murderous dolls! Mm-hmm. 
Crown and Anchor, also on the second. And we also have Play or Die. What is that? Play or Die. Mm, it's an escape game. Oh. Two passionate gamers who decide to participate in Paranoia, a very exclusive escape game. <laughs> uh, uh, escape game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but the the label escape game just sounds extremely corny. That's not even a term, I don't think. It does, like it escape does, room is a term. But this is a video game equivalent of an escape room, I guess. Is it? I don't like, know. Yeah, that's what my that's that's what I'm thinking. Because they're passionate gamers. Yeah. They're gonna get trapped in this game. Yeah, whatever. Dead Sight comes out. And then on the fifth, we have Cold Blood. That's with uh, Jean Reno, plays an assassin. Ooh. Skin in the Game. My Days of Mercy. Phil, starring Greg Kinnear as Phil. Uh, and then I believe that is it for VOD. I like when we do podcasts before a holiday weekend. There's not a whole lot. Yeah, it's it's breezy. I'm I'm hoping that the holiday weekend will give me some time to catch up on the tremendous backlog of movies that I have. Best of luck to you. Oh my god, you have no idea. It's just they just pile up. It's just piles of movies. Blu-ray this week. We got Vinegar Syndrome dropping a number of titles, including 1969's Putney Swope. Ooh, nice. Yeah, you're. In, I, I knew you were into that one. Uh, 1983's Taking Tiger Mountain, 1984's The Passing, and 1993's Night Owl. Okay. Check out Vinegar Syndrome. They they put out a lot of really interesting stuff. Yeah, I might have to pick up that Putney Swift one. I, re- I really dig Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, Arrow is releasing FM from 1978. We should have a review for that one up on the site, provided I can get to it in time. (laughs) Uh, Escape Plan, The Extractors is coming out. That's the third entry in the Escape Plan series, starring Sylvester Stallone. And this one includes Dave Bautista and 50 Cent. Is it, this is the, where they like get out of prisons, right? Yeah, I only ever saw the first one. I didn't see the second one. I hope this one's a prison in space. Um, I don't think so, but it seems like they're they're making their way to that. I mean, even the first one was slightly sci-fi, so I would not put it past them to have one in space. That'd be great if they got stuck in an escape game. <laughs> <laughs> Two passionate gamers, fifty cents of us. I, I want I want Escape Plan Four to just be in VR. And just <laughs> Sylvester Stallone is stuck in VR. That would be incredible. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Mm. The Public from 2018. That's the um, uh, Emilio Estevez directed one. Best of Enemies. No idea that that even came out, but it's hitting Blu ray. All right. An Acceptable Loss. Combat Obscura, and that's pretty much it, other than the typical gobs of anime. Remember when, remember back in the day when it was like impossible to find anime on DVD? And and even when you did find anime on DVD, it was so expensive. It was like Hmm. ridiculously expensive to buy anime on DVD. And then at some point, there's floodgates. Just yeah, up. Uh, it's uh, at some point anime became really, really big, and it just suddenly was everything was getting ported over. I think that's going to do it for this week. Oh, do we have any Criterion's? No, we don't. I didn't think so. Okay. Yeah, just just checking. Uh, thank you so much for listening. You can send us your questions and topics to podcast at filmpulse.net. You can follow us on Twitter at filmpulse.net and at filmpulse Kevin. If you have a minute, take a look at our Patreon page, patreon.com slash filmpulse. Consider helping us out by becoming a subscriber. 
For Kevin Rakestraw, my name's Adam Patterson. We'll see you next week.